Oh, look at that. Welcome, everybody. It's Dave Cooper and Jennifer, and this is episode number 42 of Building Modular. How cool is that? That's great. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And like Dave said, yep, 42 weeks, episode number 42. It is episode number 42, and today we are talking about modular home trends here to stay. Now, we've had a lot of people on the show, and so today's episode is going to be geared towards those conversations that we had and whether or not they are here to stay or not here to stay, but we think they're here to stay. So at the start of every new year, right, there's all this buzz that happens. What, you know, what was great last year? What has sticking power? What's new on the horizon for next year? And one big event that's coming up that will explore a lot of these topics is IBS. Oh, the International Builders Show, the virtual platform. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the Building Systems Council is doing a ton of uh, educational networking roundtables. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Some of that I might be actually hosting out here. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. So working through the details. So stay tuned. Yeah. What's really neat about IBSX this year is that it is a terrific platform where you can actually attend every single educational session, you know, when it's yeah. live on, you know, and, and you're there in person, oftentimes you're trying to figure out where to go, what to see, um, because there's so many great sessions that happen at the same time. Yeah. How do you pick? Well, you don't have to. That's not the great year. thing. Not this year. You're not going to miss anything. And if the session actually has a real, uh, like a lot of attendance, they're going to rerun it again later in the week. So with that said, with IBSX, that is one of the beauties of it because there are so much educational sessions happening out there that uh, you'll be able to catch every session on your time when you're ready to watch it. So, but there will be some live sessions as well. Yeah. 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 Yep. Part, and, part um, session, part live. Yeah. Is that, what is it called? Semi-live? Semi-live. Semi-live. I think ours is a semi-live session. Well, we'll have to take a look and you'll have to join us to find out. And in addition to that, you know, we're totally digressing right now, but the keynote speaker is Mike Rowe, as many of you know. Dirty um, jobs, dude. He is, if yeah. you haven't seen him speak before, he's amazing. Yeah, he is amazing. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a wonderful person. Uh, I heard that the uh, prep for the show was amazing and that they had a lot of fun. So I can only imagine, hopefully we can get Mike Rowe on the show. Any of you guys out there know Mike Rowe personally, maybe I need to talk to Greg at the NAHB, see if we can get Mike Rowe on our show. Right. It's, it's all about collaboration and, and building it better. Yeah. And today, you know, this show is not about IBSX, but this show is about the 2021 trends with sticking power. Yeah. So if you are a systems built manufacturer, if you are a traditional site builder, if you are a homeowner looking to build a prefab home or a modular home, um, Really, the show is for everybody. It really is for everybody. You know, and it's been amazing, Jen, uh, just even watching some of the modular posts happening on Facebook, Instagram. There are a lot of people researching modular. So if you're a builder out there and you're not on these platforms, there are entire conversations happening around this, not only on the professional level, but also on the consumer level. Questions like, who should I use in New Jersey? Who's built in Montana? Where can I get financing? All of it's happening and it's not just once or twice, it is happening nonstop. So if you're not in there trying to tap into those homeowners and to that, those professionals, you're missing out. Yeah. So if you're joining us from that platform today, thank you and welcome it. Welcome. Um, and like I said, this, this show is really for anybody out there who's interested in building modular homes, prefab homes, um, any system built homes, because these trends that we're talking yep. about today, you know, a lot of people when they when they hear the word trend, they're thinking, ooh, lighting, flooring, countertops, color. Um, those yep. are not the trends that we'll be speaking to today. But there are some amazing people at IBS like Don Dumal, Jane Marr, yeah. who do speak to those things. And, and hopefully we'll get a wrap around with them and be able to present those to you as well. Yeah. And if you don't know who those two are, uh, they are two very big players. They design a lot of the design centers for the uh, top 10, top 20 builders across the country. They're really tied into trends and what's happening, not only here in the country, but globally. Uh, if you go back and watch, I believe on YouTube, we have some videos with both of them. You can learn more about them. So I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, everybody. Listen, thank you very much for joining us because Jennifer at Dave Cooper Live, we are bringing you the people and the processes 
that are building it better from building tech to building science to building codes to building systems to trends all on this channel and that's what we're doing at dave cooper live so if you know somebody or you are somebody who is doing it better and doing it different we want to hear from you maybe it's a good fit for our show without further ado jen let's hop into our what are we doing presentation mm -hmm. My goodness, it's going to be a day. All right, episode 42. Can you believe it? I know. Here we are. And thanks again. We're still smiling. For um, joining us, everybody. We are live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. No. Oh, you, you, I on? didn't do any of that, did I? Yes, go ahead. Live yeah. on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitch. Twitch. There YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitch. Not Twitter yet. But Why are we live on Twitch? Because that's where all the young people are, Jennifer. Get with it. The young people go to Twitch. I know. They're gaming. They're gay. I know. Honestly, you, you, all the setup, not it. No, it's all me. All me. But all the writing and all the intelligent stuff, that is her. So no, no, no. when it comes work. to the intelligence of our show, it is definitely no, it's, Jennifer. It's all teamwork. So, all right, let's jump into it, Jennifer. Yeah. I know. I'm excited. Okay, here we go. Let me go to the slide so I can scroll through. Episode 42, modular home building trends are here to stay. Prefat homes and modular built homes are on are on trend. How you can stay in front of the curve and serve your clients in excellence is what we're going to cover today, right? Right. All right. Outdoor living spaces, Jen. Okay. So I kind of lied here. I, I said that we're not talking about design elements or anything like that. But one thing that is definitely here to stay is outdoor living spaces. Yeah. And not only outdoor living spaces, but for sure outdoor dining. Um, regardless of the climate that you're in, whether it's warm or cold, I saw a fabulous picture not too long ago, um, posted by my good friend Ira Rosh from Paragon Sports in New York City, who was teaching everybody in very cold weather how to dress for your outdoor dining right. experience. Because let's let's face it, we all still want to go out there. We all still want to enjoy the outdoors. And what we're showing you right now is an outdoor living space that's pretty amazing. Um, so what does this have to do with modular construction? Um, a couple of things. Number one, so much of your so many elements of homes can be customized and personalized on site, right? You don't have to build the entire home in the factory or off site. These photos are an example of a collaboration done um, between Jake Bruton and um, Steve Basic. And this is a prefab deck. Yep. Fully cantilevered. Fully cantilevered. With a broken thermal bridge. With a broken, first one ever mm -hmm. that we know of. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, this is an awesome, this is an awesome example. This can work on any offsite project, any traditional site project, right? This is a... Uh, you know, a home that Mark Willie was part of as well, I think with the T stud, but this deck in itself was prefabricated, built off site and put on site right. to this, to this existing building. And, and I think the big thing about this deck is exactly what you said. Yeah. So no thermal bridging, it's completely free and clear from the home. That's right. Um, and it is cantilevered. And there, I love that photo of Jake and Steve standing on the deck. Um, and it's amazing, fully engineered. But here's the point. You don't need to go to these extremes to incorporate outdoor living into your That's homes. Right. It's definitely part of the design process. It's part of getting the right design partner to help you create this for your clients and offer it to your clients. Because number one, it will differentiate you from other builders oh, yeah. when you offer these amazing outdoor living spaces. And number two, um, it's what people want. 100% what people want. So moving on with that, and I'm just looking here. Uh, Miss Dahlia didn't plug us in. Uh -oh. Oh, goodness. And I think that's down. But either way, moving. <laughs> Gotta love tech. So we, we might have to uh, speed round through our show today. Yeah, but that's all right. Uh, so moving on with everything. If you guys can see our video, please let us know for sure. Uh, because I had uh, somebody made a comment that they couldn't see our video, but I am seeing it on my phone. So I'm assuming it's happening out in the real world as well. So Peter, hopefully you stuck with us, my friend. All right, Jen, next one. Here we go. All right. So indoor air quality. 
Um, this is a trend that is definitely here to stay. And a lot of times when people talk about indoor air quality, they think about HVAC or your HVAC system, ERV, HRV. Um, one thing that people often don't consider when designing and building their home, you know, and this is um, definitely for homeowners out there, your dehumidification having the right humidity levels in your home. And this is something that is definitely driven by climate, where you are, what you're doing. Um, so it's really important that you work with a builder who understands the importance of humidity levels. This is a terrific slide that we had shown on our show with our building science show with Mark mm -hmm. Willie and Nikki Kruger. Um, we do reference the YouTube link in um, the slide and we can post that later because um, it's all about health and well-being. It's all about fresh air into the home, controlling yeah. moisture, right? Water in any of its forms inside your home is is not a good so thing. So what's bad about water, Jen? Everything? Everything when it comes to building and construction. Not good. Not oh, good yeah. for the house at all. So listen, if you're out there on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, even LinkedIn, you're a consumer, you're thinking about building, I know everybody wants to jump right into hardwood floors and tiles and let's go less money on windows. Let's go less money on whatever. Spend the money on the building. Understand that because you're going to have more money to spend on your upgrades when you're living in the house. Not only that, it's all about how you want to live in your home. It's about how healthy your home is right. and how much it costs to operate your home down the road um, so that you can make uh, some improvements down the road, whether it's, you know, flooring or countertops or whatever it might be, get your building envelope right, get your indoor air quality balanced. And maybe we can go to the next slide because the holy troika of the holy trinity um, of indoor air quality. And this again came from our show with Nikki Kruger. It's, it's um, from a presentation that a, a collaborative effort um, but ventilation, filtration, and humidity control, that's your holy trinity of your home. So really pay attention to that if you're holy a Holy trinity? Exactly. I'm not, there, it's big right words. There. I know, I know. These aren't my words. <laughs> um, but it's something that we can't underscore enough. Yeah. Healthy homes affect everything. How you feel, how your children feel, how that's you're, right. you know, if you have aging parents who live with you, this is a super big deal um, yeah. as now and and always. It really is. With Shara Seiko on the on the you know on the show and understanding how sick her kids were and what was happening in their environments and all the things that were happening. If you're planning on building, these are really important things to take into consideration. The old school way of doing things, how it was done a hundred years ago, does not work today. Period. End of story. It's just the way it is. Look at what you're putting into the house. Look, in the, look at how you're filtering the house. Look at the fresh air you're bringing into the house. Super important. Absolutely. So before you get into the building envelope, before you get, or bef no, I should say, before you get into the cosmetics of your home, really talk about the building envelope and the systems that you're putting in your home. Super important. And of course, um, it's all about the prep work, right? So today's a perfect example where we need to put in uh, a little more prep work to our setup because obviously we lost Dave for a minute, but that's okay. Yeah, um, I really lose me. I'm back <laughs> here fixing something. Because so, if it's live, it will go wrong. Absolutely. So um, again, thank you to Nikki Kruger and everybody else uh, who shared these slides with us and um, allowed us to share them with you today. Uh -huh. Um, and again, this is all about differentiating you as a builder, you as a manufacturer and offering more value to your clients um, because oftentimes clients will come back for more than one home. Clients will choose to build multiple homes with the same builder and especially um, the relationship between manufacturers and builders. You want that builder coming back over and over and over again, a repeat yeah, customer. For sure, for sure. So listen, if you guys are out there right now, we are live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. I was twitching a minute ago with all the uh, technical issues happening behind the scenes, but listen, everybody, please hit that like button right now. Let us know that you're out there. Please send us a comment. Tell us where you're joining us from today, and please let us know how the video feed was. We did see one comment in there that you guys weren't seeing it but it looks like it's up and running. I do know there's people out there watching. I can see you, so join us. Let us know who you are, and uh, or at least just give us some likes. We love that. All right, Jennifer.
moving on to the next topic here is technology. Technology in your home. And are we talking about surround sound? Are we talking about LED lights? Are we talking about what other technology is it? We're, we're not talking about smart home technology. We're not talking mm. about clap on, clap off lighting. No, no, no. No uh, cameras? <laughs> no. Oh, come this on, you're boring me now. What do you mean technology? So this is the technology behind the scenes. And this is definitely um, more for the builder, the manufacturer, um, and anyone out there who um, wants to stay ahead of the curve. Because guess what? A couple of things here with construction technology. Number one, sorry, everybody's doing it. Don't think they're not. They, you know, if if things are working for you, business is good right now. And why break the mold? Why press pause to invest in some construction technology? Yep. Now is the time. It really is time, uh, and we're getting. This is more on a manufacturing level, not on the consumer level. So when we're talking about technology. Uh, between parametric design and um, the generative design or just simple workflow processes, simple workflow process. That guy right there with the crazy hairdo, that's my friend, uh, Jordy Puchinga. Yeah, I love so Jordy. Jordy's, Jordy's a great guy with ModuCore. They have some great technology. This isn't a sales pitch for them, but they're doing it different. Yeah. So if you're an offsite systems built um, manufacturer or builder, again, yeah. we're, we're really calling things to your attention. You know, a lot of you out there already use Builder Trend or maybe Co-Construct or some of those off the shelf, or maybe you even have a custom platform that you've designed. Modicore is just one example of an ERP system um, for manufacturers that integrates the whole process. Yeah. Um, you know, BIM obviously is a whole different conversation, but in, now is your time, now is your chance to invest in construction technology. There's so much information out there um, in terms of what's available and definitely use our channel and our show as a reference. Um, because like Dave said, it's not, these aren't only design tools that exist. They are full end to end solutions like um, yeah. the example of Modicore. Right, right. Yeah, for sure. They definitely are. Hey, look, uh, Dr. Amar's joining us. Hey, Dr. Amar, listen, I do. I owe Dr. Amar a follow up. You sent me a follow up. Uh, we've just been kind of on the run, but you are on my list to follow up with this week. So I don't want you to think I forgot about you, doctor. I do appreciate you reaching out so all the way from scotland nice yeah i bet he has a good accent yeah you got a good accent everybody loves the scottish accent is that is scottish the well, word i'm supposed to use they definitely have some good whiskey over there <laughs> i do like their whiskey for sure I, li I like my whiskey no matter where it comes from yeah right so all right love it love it love it all right jennifer moving on down the road we talked about construction technology we're going to continue on the conversation with construction technology but now it's a little bit different now we're talking something that the consumer does see and use. So there's two things, right? There's the construction technology that happens behind the scenes that allows you to um, better manage your business, better plan your business. And then there is um, the marketing technology, which speaks to the client experience, the user experience. Right. Um, prop tech is a hot word that you'll continue to hear in 2021 and most likely beyond. So many financial or yeah. so many capital raises right now are funding prop tech ventures. Um, and this uh, conversation with John Sicilian from Sicilian Partners references the question, why do they matter? Number one, why are there so many acronyms? Number two, why should I care? Here's the deal. You have your behind the scenes network of how you interact with your manufacturer and how you interact with your um, trade network and how you might interact with your suppliers and your designers. How are you interacting with and engaging with your clients? These are two totally different things. One is a back end, the other is a front end. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when clients come to your website or when they come to your model homes or <laughs> when they come um, and visit you the, for the first time, whether it's in person or online, what is their experience like? Is your website engaging? Yeah. Is there anything holding them there? And then once they become a client, how can they engage with you digitally as well? Well, and that's really it. And I think the consumer is so used to this, right? And this is one of the things like Sicilian Partners brings to the table, right? They're bringing that whole retail experience of out of industry experience to the home building world. And, you know, they really believe in treating the consumer like you get treated when you're out in the retail world, right? And shopping and, and interface online, 
all of those things. And that's why people are so loyal to brands, whether it's Prada or Gap or any of them, right? Walmart, Target. They like the experience. So Nordstrom's, I mean, you could, you could buy something there, take it back five years later and they'll just give you a new one. So well, tell them Dave Cooper sent you. Well, I'm not sure that's the topic that we're, we're no, I know, but, I know. but it is, it is customer service. And we're going to talk about that that's in right. a minute, but in terms of that user's experience, right now we're all living in a very digital world we're ordering our groceries online we're ordering mm -hmm. our prescriptions online we're, we're doing all of this so how your consumer can engage with you online is a super big deal take a look at it from their eyes and, and understand what their experience is can they choose their selections mm -hmm. online once they've become a client or are you stuck in the world of email where they have to email you a choice and you have to email them a price and, and blah, blah, blah. Or can they get that instant answer that we're so conditioned to receive right now? That's right. That's right. All right. Moving, moving through, Jennifer. Moving through. Where are we? Commercial. My favorite, our kids' favorite place oh. in the world. Okay. So the next trend was staying power has really nothing to do with trend, right? It has to do with my fat belly. I do love this place and it, 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 it tickles my heart that they are so uh, into modular now. I love it. Let me put them up here. Right. So what, so customer service- Bam, Chick-fil-A. Yeah, Chick-fil-A. Let's go, I'm right? hungry. When you think about, and, and whether or not, you know, you're a fan of their food or, or you know, choose to go there or it fits your lifestyle, you cannot argue that they have remarkable customer service. Right. And some of you out there are probably wondering how come we're going out of industry, picking somebody who has nothing to do with new home construction to talk about customer service. Well, two reasons. Number one, they are number one. They are number one. <laughs> and number two, they have chosen to use modular construction for all of their go forward projects. They really have. They jumped in with both feet. They've had a lot of success from what we're hearing. We haven't had them on yet, but we're trying to get Chick-fil-A on. And again, if anybody knows Chick-fil-A, send them our way. We want to talk with them and have them on the show and really understand why they went this route. So I think it's super important to understand they're not the only retailer to do this. Um, there's some other ones out there. I think, uh, was it Waterberg? What's the burger place that was in uh, Fairfield? Shake Shack. Shake Shack. I believe they all went, they went modular on their builds as well. So there's quite a few of retail, retail, not hotels, because hotels have already made a big switch to it. But now the retail industry, retail food mart has, food industry, right. food mart has gone that direction. <laughs> right. So it's really exciting to see how Chick-fil-A, number one in the world in terms of client service, um, has chosen number one to in the world, really? partner with offsite construction. That's really cool. Cool stuff. Okay. Here is, I think this is our last trend that we're going to talk about today, um, but couldn't be more important. And it's something we talk pretty much on every single show. Doesn't about. surprise me in the least bit either. Go ahead. I won't say it. I know what it is already. Culture. I have the inside track. Absolutely. It's your company culture. Yeah. What is the essence and the spirit of your organization? Whether you are a two person organization, a 200 person, 2000, sure. it doesn't matter. What are your core values? What's important? Are, do you have any mentoring that's going on? Right. Um, how do you support your individuals to be their best selves? regardless of what type of degree they've earned, regardless of their GPA when they graduated, mm -hmm. how do you encourage and inspire your team to be their best? Yeah, for real. I mean, it, it, you know, when you look at this next person that's coming up, it is a publicly traded company, right? Uh, I interviewed them, this, this is going back years now, mm -hmm. and to be a publicly traded company and be at the top of the home building list for, for culture, is amazing to me. So without further ado, Cheryl Palmer. Yeah, Cheryl Palmer and Taylor Morrison. So they are one yep. of the biggest builders in our country. Um, and they were the only home builder to earn a spot on Glassdoor's Best Places to Work, which is an employee um, used website. You know, it's a third party website. And Cheryl at the helm of the company, Cheryl Palmer, you'll yeah. often find her on Fox News, CNBC, MSN. Right. Um, she's constantly out there talking about their, you know, company who is performing amazing quarter after quarter. Um, but she often credits her team 
and the strategies um, that they have um, implemented to really build an amazing team. And in fact, in this interview with, with Cheryl that we're referencing here, this goes back, you know, a while. Um, Dave, you asked Cheryl, you know, what is new in innovation? What's next in innovation? And believe it or not, she covers several topics in terms of where she thinks innovation of the future is going to happen. Yep. But her first response starts with culture. It really did. I mean, it was all about the employees because without them, you're not getting very far and you're not going anywhere. In fact, I know you can't read that, so I'm going to read it to you. Uh, having a great company culture is no longer just an option. It's an expectation. Today's employees considered as much as they do salary and other traditional benefits when seeking a new role. And while one company culture might not work for another, I do think there are basic building blocks that any company can adopt to foster and enrich a vibrant culture from the inside out. So with that said, Jennifer, this is what's so cool about Cheryl. And if you think about this advice, everybody, because this was a couple of years ago, she said this, and they are at the top of the list of places to work in the home building industry. Mm -hmm. So maybe, not only that, maybe they are at the top of the list in terms of performance on they the are. open market. So, you know, is there a correlation there? Yes. 100%. That's what I was getting to, but you cut me off. That's it. You know what we need? We need, Remember in the old shows, they had that big hook that would come in and just grab somebody and drag them out. That's what we need around here. Well, when these topics come up, I mean, this is something that Dave and I firmly believe in. And, you know, we are disciples, you know, no pun intended, of servant leadership and the yeah. um, foundation of servant le leadership and entree leadership and Dave Ramsey solutions. You know, that's a good resource for that type of thing. Um, we're going to talk in a minute about somebody else who really believes in servant leadership. Um, but essentially, this is where it all starts. The great news about this trend, again, it's not a trend. It's here to stay. Um, that's first of all. Second of all, it doesn't cost a lot of money to create a really engaging company culture. No, it doesn't. It does not. Um, when you get into leadership as a servant leader, and that's kind of how Cheryl drives her home of her company, um, it's, 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 you work together. You don't really have employees, so to speak, right? your teammates. Mm -hmm. And I think if people approach just that one little thing as teammates, you know, and not approach it with I or they work for, those things make a huge difference and really make people feel empowered. They do. And, um, you know, like I said, it doesn't take a lot of money, but what it does take is consistency and uh, clarity, mm -hmm. clarity of message, because when everybody's clear on what's important to the team, um, and it's not just she winning. Keeps looking at me. You I, I, know. <laughs> I understand. I know, but it's it's not just winning. You know, yes, you want a winning culture, but that that isn't the only thing that defines success. You know, and and um, yeah. super excited because tomorrow uh, we'll be broadcasting live on location from Randall Partners, and we'll be sharing with you their theory around um, their wraparound approach yeah. to culture and business and and wraparound means everything from helping with you know all of the work that needs to be done you know that any business needs to do from accounts payable and accounts receivable right. and all of that but takes it one step further um, and talks about mentoring their mentoring program mm -hmm. and how you constantly encourage people to um, be continuous learners and that's that's really critical to uh, creating a culture of success. It is critical. And we're going to talk about, about that tomorrow. Not only on that, but they're they're heavily involved into their educational system, the public school system, all the way from kindergarten on up through high school mm -hmm. uh, with education and training within their community. And they have over 25 plus companies. They're they're a big organization and their 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 CEO, the owner, the founder, privately owned still reaches out, I think, on a weekly basis and has conversations with each and every one of them uh, to talk about culture, talk about the business, where it's headed, what it's doing. So tomorrow is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and they're, they got a big focus. Uh, they're looking at offsite construction, pods, panelization, you name it. They're looking for it. And if you're out there, they are acquiring. In other words, that means spending money for other companies, whether you're in good shape or bad shape, if it's the right fit for them, they do not have a problem buying a company that's that's struggling and turning it around. 
Absolutely. Because they're looking for people. They're looking for people right. who are open minded and working hard and really um, driving their business. And that's actually the crux of this presentation today, um, because all of these things, when bundled together, right, when you're thinking about these outdoor living spaces, don't just think about your homes that you're building for other clients. Think about your own business. That's right. Do you have a place, you know, if if clients and um, your employees are still coming to work, is there a comfortable space for them to work outside? This is yeah. not just about the homes that you're building. If you're a company or an organization, where can your, your team sit outside comfortably either to do some work or have a meeting, an open air meeting? Right. Um, you know, because that's what a lot of people are looking for today um, in terms of health and well-being, not just in their own personal home, but also in their place of work. Mm -hmm. um, construction technology, the next generation of workers, the next generation of construction leaders, like Jerry Makahi said recently, they're growing up with a cell phone in one hand, an iPad in the other, they're all digital. You, if you want the next generation of construction leaders to be interested in joining your organization, you need to meet them where they're at. You need to get some tech in there. Tech, 100%. That, that's why we're on Twitch, Jim. That's exactly Because that's right. all about tech. It's gaming. It's all the young people out there. And that's why we're there. And that's why we're going after that. So, all right, everybody, listen, I think this was uh, a very informative conversation, Jennifer, because when you look at offsite construction and you plan well, what comes of it? Well, you know, this is my favorite slide, right? Precision plus performance equals, equals profitability. And hmm. this is true for businesses and homeowners alike. If you build with precision, i.e. if you choose to use offsite construction in, as the method to build your new home and you pay attention to the performance of that home, like your indoor air quality and like your heating and cooling, like your uh, dehumidification. Um, when you when you think about the systems in your home, profitability for that new homeowner comes in the lower operating costs. That's more money in their yeah. pocket every month. So that statement is true, not just for manufacturers, not just for builders, but right. also for homeowners who are looking to use offsite construction to build their modular home or prefab home. Yeah, hundred percent. Offsite's the future. It's here to stay. It's not for every application. Well, let me think about it. Offsite's for every application. It just depends on what offsite method that you choose to use for your job site. So, all right, everybody, listen, love it. What else you got, Jennifer? Is that it? Uh, well, again, just a reminder, please join us tomorrow. We'll be on location in North Florida, north of Orlando at um, Randall Partners. And uh, 1 p.m. Eastern time, 10 a.m. Pacific. We will be there live on location for sure. And guess what happened? What's happening on Thursday? Tell us. Uh, we have Bill Ryman. Bill Ryman, not George Ryman. Bill <laughs> Ryman will be on the show Very from cool. South Florida. Uh, other side, We're, we haven't seen him personally, uh, but the Real Build podcast. Excellent. It's going to be on this show talking with us. Wait till you see some of the work he's doing. But the reason he's going to be on Increasing Influence Thursday, he's going to talk about why doing the videos for his business, being on site, being on location has changed how he's doing business and how it's made him one of the most sought after builders in South Florida. I don't know anybody else who's ever shared a story like that. Nobody. Hey, check it out. If you haven't seen it, go to Connecticut Valley Home site. Check out our YouTube channel that we had there. Absolutely. You can see all those videos. And it did. It changes a lot. Anyhow, I'm Dave Cooper. I'm Jennifer Cooper. And this was another episode number 42 of Building Modular. Everybody that's joined us out there, thank you so much. We will be in touch. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Sounds great. Bye, Bye everyone. Now.